Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, depends on where you are. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you today. My name is Ryan Chen, and I'm a director of design innovation strategy here at Brussels Group. In today's webinar, Casting a Vision, we'll be talking about how companies can respond or even anticipate disruptive technology and develop a path to build long-term technology advantages. On your screen, you should be able to see a Q&A icon at the bottom of the screen. So um, click on it, and if you have any question along the way, um, feel free to uh, post your questions there. Uh, we have a Q&A session at the end of the hour uh, for us to uh, go through the questions. So uh, I'm sure, I mean, any, many of you who are interested in these uh, topics has some um, uh, read a lot about technologies, how the future is all about smart technology, how the next 10 years is going to be the most disruptive 10 years of all time. And all these changes, all these new technologies present a lot of innovation opportunities for the market incumbents, for the challengers, um, all sorts of different path, uh, potential path forward. The key question is then, how can we as an organization beat the competitions and win in this future? These are the kind Kind of challenges and the kind of questions we our designers our engineers uh, products are really that like, meets the needs of the what the, meets the needs of a user uh, either they are needs now or in the future and our innovation approach integrates business viability consumer desirability and technical feasibility the three pillars of innovation or we have separate tools and capabilities and knowledge under each pillar of the innovation. And the real strength is really about utilizing a mixture of tools under each pillar to drive innovation. In today's webinar, we'll be focusing more on the technological innovation. Here, we develop technology foresight and turn emerging technologies into meaningful innovations. As communicators in our emails and uh, LinkedIn messages, this is a, a, ten, is a two part series. Today, we are be talking about casting a vision, how we can generate a forward looking technology roadmap. We do have a follow up webinar which is about how we can turn new technologies into meaningful innovation, more of the applied side of it. Um, at the end of the webinar, you will get a link uh, to register uh, for that second webinar uh, in the chat box. So with that, let's go to the contents of our agenda of the webinar today. Um, at the beginning, we will present the challenge of technological innovation or road mapping of the technology. We will describe our approach and with a few case studies to support it. And lastly, uh, some of the tips that uh, we can do now in order to kickstart the technology, uh, no, technology road mapping process. So let's start with challenge. Many of you who have experience or uh, interacted with colleagues uh, who are in technology or product planning. So let's take a few minutes, uh, just take a few moments uh, to think about two or three challenges that you commonly face in technology or product planning. You can write it down on, the, on your notes, uh, on your laptop, or even share them in the chat box. 
And hopefully uh, the webinar would help to address some of your challenges, some of your concerns. And if not, we can always discuss during the Q&A. So we also list some of the challenge that we see uh, in, a, uh, in some of our clients. And first of all, one of the things that we got asked a lot uh, is typically the information overload. If you do a quick Google search, there's no lack of technology report. There's no lack of researchers or even frameworks on the future of technology. Some of them might be pointing to the same direction, but many others providing conflicting views and information. So with this high degree of uncertainty, many uh, have challenges and difficulty trying to extract what is relevant, what is important for them. Do you face this kind of challenge in your work? I'm sure many of us does, and I do. Another challenge is about technology is increasingly getting more and more complex. So much so that a lot of uh, new technological innovations are driven by the big, com big technology companies, the Microsoft, the Apples, and the Amazons of such. As you can see on the top right, you can see tech companies, tech firms are increasingly getting more important and getting bigger. In 2020, the top seven largest uh, companies by market cap are all tech firms. And if we look at the height curve on the bottom right and look at some of the innovation uh, futures, some of the technologies of the future, you see names, you see terms such as nanoscale 3D printing, edge analytics, explainable AI. These are all the terms which too many are very novel, very new, um, and complex in nature. So um, as someone who works in technology planning or uh, product planning, technology is going to be important, but very complex topic. And lastly, the rate of change is getting faster than ever. Think about how long it takes for you to start using some of the, uh, for example, Uber um, or some of the products that uh, you experience in your day-to-day -day life. The graph on the top right uh, talk about how many, the number of years it took for each product to gain their first 15 million users. It's 12 years for mobile phone, four years for iPad, iPod, and two years for Twitter. And as we move forward, the rate of change is going to be faster and faster. And even we talk about the current events, COVID-19. Well, it's very destructive on the social, health, and economic sense. It also accelerates a lot of trends, technology trends, telehealth, food delivery, remote working. A lot of these technologies are driven, accelerated, by the impact of the COVID-19. On the bottom right, you see a nice image, an interesting image uh, that's been shared in LinkedIn that COVID-19 is actually leading the digital transformation in many organizations. Does that apply to your organization as well? So what is the result of all these challenges? There are simply too many failed technological innovations, some of which was launched to the market too late, some perhaps too early. And companies might, might take a wrong technological, technology path, or they may develop a perfect technological solution which has no market. And these are all the different potential results and pitfalls of not having a good planning. So as a professional and uh, who work in uh, technology and product planning, I'm sure we all have opinions and perspectives 
or even insight on how our companies uh, should respond. The key challenge is how can we turn these insights into a more actionable step that is forward looking and while in the meantime, minimize uncertainties. With that, I'm going to describe our approach to do so. We believe in a proper technology roadmap. It's a very effective communication tool, a planning tool that helps us to support the long-term strategic planning and match with short-term uh, goals and specific uh, technical solution, technology solutions in order to achieve the goals of the future, the strategic goals of the company. And unlike a product portfolio, the time scale aspect of the roadmap is very important. It's not about creating the best possible product, the next generation product, but it's about having a foresight, having a horizon one, two, and three approach to your innovations that you can go step by step, achieve things that you might not be able to do in the next year. A technology roadmap lives in the strategic planning part of the technological innovation. Here are the three different phases of the technology innovation. On the left, which is the focus of today's webinar, is about strategic application of technology. We do have a next webinar, as I mentioned earlier, that is more on the applied application of the technology in the technical innovation sense. We also uh, conduct a lot of product development, which is about realizations of the technology. So Without further ado, this is our four step approach to create a forward looking technology roadmap. There are four steps here and we start with step one, ambition. This is where we try to cast the vision, understand what is the scenarios of the future. In step two, we will look at how to translate that vision into a series of the strategy and tactics that help us to achieve the vision that we want. In a step three roadmap, this is about translating that strategy into a um, actionable step um, into a roadmap that communicates the step-by-step -step, uh, process that we want to achieve our strategy. And lastly, iterate. This is where we uh, refine and continuously adopt our roadmap to the shifting environment, the context. While the full process it seems rather straightforward, envision, strategize, roadmap, and iteration, there's many activities per step. It is a very rigorous process that requires a lot of analysis and primary research. We will show the steps and the activities in the following slides. So let's start with ambition. This is where we start to develop foresight into technology and how it might impact the future of your technology, future of your industry, sorry. In this process, we try to build our understanding of the future. And we start off with a trend research. Here is where we try to understand the different drivers that will impact, that will shape the future of our industry. And the drivers might come from economic uh, drivers, political, social, or even environmental. At Brussels Group, we do have a mega trend uh, analysis where we have 10 different mega trends to systematically analyze the driver and how it applies uh, to each, to, to different industries. On the right, you see an example of how potentially uh, consumer um, 
empowerment uh, consumers need and desire for more experience and the shifting of how sustainability, environmentalism, or even social responsibility becoming a more important uh, and um, drivers in consumer reason, and that is under the ethical living. How does these three different uh, mega trends may potentially play out in the three different horizon? In the chat box, you will see the link uh, to show to see the ten different mega trends. But basically, the first activity is really about understanding the context. What are the different drivers? What are the different trends outside the technology scope you might share? the future of your industry. Next, we'll look at the technology itself. Having an understanding of the context, we look at all the different technologies within the industry and adjacent industry to understand what are the different trends and the potential disruptors. It's important for us to look beyond what's happening, the technological trends in our own industry, but look at adjacent areas to see how they potentially might impact uh, your industry. On the right is a technology industry roadmap for an autonomous vehicle. How you go from level one, which is uh, kind of basic driver assistance, to level, level five, which you can take your hands off, your eyes off, and minds off. So this is, kind of, this is a very uh, non five level industry roadmap uh, for the autonomous vehicle. But it's also very important for adjacent, in adjacent industries, such as kitchen appliances manufacturers. They want to know how food delivery, grocery delivery might impact them. If you are in the office productivity services, this is going to be important as well. So no matter what industry you are in, it will be good to understand uh, the technology trends in your industry, but also in the adjacent industry. And if, in, if with an example here, you can think about how autonomous vehicle roadmap might potentially impact your industry. And with the understanding of the drivers and also the technologies that will shape the future, we will start to do a scenario planning activity. As you conduct your research, your trend research and technology scouting, you're bound to see some uncertainties, things that you cannot predict, things that are just too Far in the future, you don't have enough evidence to make a, a, a good estimate of how it will play out. You'll be, potentially, you'll be asking about when will the technology breakthrough arrive? What is the nature of the competition in five years? How the consumer will shift in their behavior? All these uncertainties are important uh, in, the, in the planning of the technology roadmap. The process that we turn the uncertainties um, into something that is more manageable is called the scenario planning. And on the right, you see an example. This is the scenario of the future that we created for the healthcare industry. In this example, we consider, we consider two key uncertainty. On the vertical axis, it's about the nature of the competition. On the top, you have incumbents, they hold technological advantages. They still dominate the market. Below you will see uh, scenarios on the democratization of healthcare, basically new entrants um, coming in into the competition. Uh, everyone can uh, provide uh, healthcare services um, and uh, solutions to the market. On the horizontal axis, it's about resource. On the left, we are assuming the future where resource is scarce. On the right, the future where we have abundant resource. And putting these two uncertainties together, we created four different scenarios. 
on the bottom right, as an example, on the bottom right, you have a fragmentation scenario where um, you get many different new entrants, new challenger competing with the traditional player to offer a wide range of products and services. And what's the implication to technology? Here, the driver for the technology, the focus for the technology is about differentiation. It's about how can you create unique benefits for a niche market for a different user. Another example on the top left is about the transformation scenario where you have um, current uh, uh, incumbents um, working in a limited resource. This is where uh, the system might not be able to cope with the increasing demand and that the technologies will be driven to drive, will be driven uh, by sectorial changes. You want to have technology that can change the whole industry, that can change uh, how healthcare is fundamentally different. So this scenario planning helps us to map out the different scenarios of the future based on the uncertainties that we have. As an example, um, as I mentioned before, we did a future of a healthcare um, internal case uh, to understand, to help our clients to understand uh, what is the future of the healthcare industry. It's an extremely, it's a extremely challenging industry because there are just so many different uncertainties and conflicting objectives. So having that scenario play out, as I mentioned in the previous uh, slide, uh, we are able to identify five different shifts that will drive the technology trends in the health and the wellness. On the bottom right is one of the shifts that we identify, which is the scenario of health and wellness in any time, any way. And in that scenario, we describe all the different technologies that might impact the future. Uh, things as, such as drone delivery, autonomous vehicle, ambient tech, how they play a part in the any time, any way wellness, and how companies potentially can build a roadmap to achieve that future. In a step two, we want to translate the scenarios of the future. You might have developed four, you might have developed five. Uh, but how do you translate the different possibilities into your vision and then uh, backcast from the vision of the future to your uh, strategic focus? So imagine if you have four different scenarios of future. Which one is your preferred future? How do you identify the path going forward? We start the step two with a strategic analysis. This is where you're trying to understand what is your core strength and weaknesses compared to your competitor in each of the scenario. Uh, tools such as uh, SWOT analysis is very useful to understand your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, um, in, in one of, in four scenarios. And we also do strategic wargaming, basically a workshop activity where different teams take a role of the different um, industry players. It could be your competitor, it could be a new challenger and develop different plans in order to achieve the future. And through this exercise uh, to help our clients to develop a more robust and responsive strategy. So once you understand what is your strength and weaknesses, you can then identify what is your preferred future. Of the four different scenarios of the future, one of them might be your preferred future because there's a better fit to your strength, a better fit to your strategic direction or it's just a future that has less competition. The trick here is not necessarily about picking a scenario that has the highest possibility, but looking at do you have what it takes to move the industry, to move the consumers, to nudge the consumers to your, towards your preferred future.
So once you have the vision of the future, then you can use that as your objective and start to create different innovation themes. The innovation themes are the different opportunities that you can use technology uh, to create solutions. Each team uh, will have different solutions uh, and uh, different solutions may, may need to be tested. It is essential, it's very essential to identify the right innovation themes. Otherwise, you, you might be mapping out a perfect technical solution that doesn't serve any opportunity. A good um, or example would be the BlackBerry phones. Their physical keyboard probably is a great technical solution. However, um, there is a solution that um, the market does not want. Here, uh, we have an example of how we help uh, automobile uh, technology manufacturer uh, plan uh, for their future. So the client is a top automobile B2B manufacturer. They want to be more strategic. They want to make sure that they can transform from a component manufacturer to a technological leader for the future. Here, instead of uh, taking a path of like, technological uh, technology driven path where we look at the just purely from the technology point of view we look at the future we look at what is their vision of the future and what the potential cities of the future may look like so doing uh, research to understand and how consumers how technologies and how uh, societies in the city will evolve we develop five different city models of the future. And for example, city model C, you could be uh, more focused on ethical living and social responsibility. City model B might be more about a planned economy where uh, technology, where innovation comes from a more infrastructure level. So each uh, city model's growth is unique and that presents different opportunities for technological innovation. So we describe the five different city models um, help to um, identify opportunities and approach for each of the city models. The results help our clients to develop a more strategic approach to their tech roadmap and one each for the five different city models. So going from strategy to tactical. Here uh, in a roadmap, we translate the strategy into a roadmap by integrating uh, the market and the product strategy. For some of you, this might be a more familiar process. The key here is really how we can integrate the market perspective, the product perspective, the consumer perspective, and the technology perspective. And the very first activities that we'll be doing in this step is what we call a synchronization. Here, typically what we do is we have a multidisciplinary uh, team working together to align the different drivers for the roadmap. It could be a user driver, a market, a product and service roadmap, and of course, technology roadmap. And some companies might start with user. Others might start with a technology. And it doesn't really matter, but at the end, the results should be synchronized. You need to identify what are the link between the different touch points uh, in each other's roadmap and how we can help each other to create uh, a more integrated approach. So in that process, Definitely, uh, you might start to think about there are so many different challenges, so many different conflicts. And that's why the next activity is all about prioritization. Prioritization is an art by itself, but we do have many tools uh, to help us to do that. Sometimes we use a balanced scorecard 
with a customized criteria. Other times uh, we use the urgency importance matrix and et cetera, et cetera. There are many tools for us to do that. And we select the best tools based on the context. If you are in a very competitive industry, the tool on the right might be a good prioritization for you. Here, uh, we look at how, um, in this example, how market portfolio and a technology portfolio can be combined together. And even though the example is market and technology, you can use it for um, user, you can use it for products, or you can use it for other different drivers. The process goes by this. First, you start evaluating your portfolio separately. On the top left, you see the market portfolio. And you can evaluate the four different options uh, based on first, the market attractiveness. What is the potential market size for these um, ideas or these uh, options? And then you look at your relative market position. Do you have the capability, the strength, the market uh, penetration, and present you with a strong competitive position? This exercise on the top left would help to prioritize your market portfolio and identify top right area, top right squares as the key priority. In this example, B and C. Similarly, you want to do the same exercise for your technology portfolio. And again, evaluating your options based on technology creativeness and a relative technology position. You can then combine both market priority and technology priority to identify uh, which is the right uh, options that you want to aggressively pursue and what are the some of the options that you want to be more selective. It is a relatively simple process. However, the, it is highly underutilized. A lot of times um, when we work with the client, uh, some of their existing process is more negotiation, a group agreement, a group discussion process. But some of these rather straightforward tools will help to facilitate a more objective prioritization of the uh, roadmap. So lastly, we need to identify the resource and communicate the plan. The example on the right described the different standards and platforms that the companies want to adopt. And they are highlighted in purple. And also the internal developments that the companies want to develop. So um, there's two points I want to communicate here. First, in our com very complex technology world, no companies can create everything by themselves. So uh, they need to adopt to standard uh, platforms and also um, and, and also uh, identify areas that they want to uh, really develop internally. So it is important to dedicate resources to develop benefits and the features that really differentiate you from your competitors. So you want to be, you want to make sure that whatever internal developments that you focus on is really a delighter, it's really a differentiator. Second, uh, second point I have to make here is that it's also very important in terms of the visual communication. A lot of times uh, we uh, work with clients that develop a very, very complex um, technology roadmap and which might be great uh, for the technical team but uh, we need to communicate to the senior managements, we need to communicate uh, to the marketing departments, and that's where a visual communication might be important. So case study here, um, we have one, uh, we, we work with Nuke, uh, basically uh, a premium baby product manufacturer. They want to understand how technology can bring more meaningful uh, benefits and opportunities to their um, baby product. So we developed a smart baby, baby product roadmap with them. And on the top right, 
you can see how we evaluate all the different technologies and all the different uh, product opportunities into the three horizon and how we can um, help them uh, working through um, the, the different horizons and linking different technologies together to, to, get, uh, to help them to plan their path. The process we went through is typically, I mean, similar to what we described, uh, having a lot of workshops with multiple stakeholders. We also translate the roadmap into a future concept that serves as a guide to their capability development and product planning. You can see on the bottom right. So lastly, iteration. Road mapping is not do it once and be done type of activity. You need to test it, you need to validate it. It's also a very highly iterative and require continuous updates, either planned or unplanned. So first activity here, qualitative and quantitative testing. We believe in uh, evidence-based uh, innovation and we are very, very rigorous about testing. So here we want to combine qual and quant test to help reduce uncertainties. And we does that with technology road mapping. On the right, you see an example of how we use a quant survey to evaluate different technologies or the technology application. And using two different metrics, that's the technology fulfill consumer needs. Or, and on the, on the bottom, that's the technology, um, is the per technology perceived as innovative and unique? So the process of doing this crime research really help our clients to validate their roadmap. Are they prioritizing the right technology? Should they continue to innovate technologies that can potentially deliver great uh, consumer value, but might be outdated now? Or do they need to investigate, investigate market white spaces or just monitoring and deprioritize uh, some of the technologies that they have. Primary research gives you a good indication of the landscape, but um, the events which are more unpredictable and may have a great impact will require a different ways of analysis. And this is why we stress test the roadmap. In this activity, we try to identify conditions that will make the roadmap irrelevant. So if think about your technology roadmap or your product planning, can you identify events or conditions that will make your technology roadmap irrelevant? And once you identified the different events, you want to evaluate the probabilities and the potential impacts and develop a strategy to mitigate that. In that process, you are essentially identifying a list of the signposts. A signpost uh, is an event uh, that requires a shift in the roadmap. And a vigilant company will continuously monitor the signpost and adapt their roadmap accordingly. Bottom right are some of the potential signposts that you want to look out for, or some of the events that may potentially make your roadmap irrelevant. For example, it could be a drastic increase in the cost of the raw material, or it could be a, a breakthrough in a, a competing or adjacent industry, or in many of the more regulated industries, the changes in the rules and the regulations might make your roadmap irrelevant. So in these activities, we really want to identify um, events which might have low probability but great impact to your future. An example here is a work that we, we have done with a kitchen appliance uh, manufacturer. They operate in a luxury environment, a luxury segment of the market. And this, uh, this is a market that's highly prone to disruption. 
COVID is a good example of how uh, a potential disruption changes consumers' perception about luxury products. So our clients, um, they need to uh, develop a more robust roadmap to help them to plan for the future of the luxury kitchen. So we help them uh, create that plan you can see on the top right. But what I want to focus here is the level of um, the extent that we help to stress test the roadmap. On the bottom right, you see some of the potential events that we hypothesize and try to evaluate what is the potential impact of these events uh, to their roadmap and how they can create a response uh, towards some of these low probability but high impact events. So with that, that, that concludes the four different steps and right, the different activities that we have in our technology roadmap exercise. For us, a good technology roadmap is forward looking. It does not take just the next two or three years into consideration, but really starts with the vision of the future. It's integrated, it's not a working in silo but integrate with your unplanned events so that uh, you can respond and, um, and adapt accordingly. A good roadmap is also differentiated. You want to create a roadmap that utilizes your company's strength and uh, address some of the weaknesses. And lastly, it should be relatable. Relatable in a way that it communicates your plan to a wide a range of audience and have something that they can remember and relate to. There's a lot of information that we went through, a lot of process and some of activities, and hopefully that helps to answer some of your, provide you with some tips and some process that you can start working on. You will receive a copy of this presentation, uh, but, um, but I mean, feel free to uh, put any questions you, you may have in the Q&A box. In our last session, we will provide some tips uh, to help you get started. As mentioned, it's a rigorous process, but we need to start some way. So here are some of the advisors that help us to start the process. First, you want to uh, build awareness and a desire for a change in your organization. So it's essential for you to get uh, different technology foresight, understand and highlight the danger of doing nothing. And then we have to create a sense of urgency. Also, you want to communicate the value of a good technology roadmap that can help prepare for the future and uh, help to prepare for different uncertainties for the future. Next, you want to acquire the know-how, identify a process for the technology roadmap, or potentially identify partners you want to work with in this exercise. Besides the process, you also want to learn how to embrace uncertainties and conflicts. These are kind of part and parcel of the road mapping exercise. Lastly, it's just get started. Road mapping is a very iterative activity and there's no perfect road map. So it's essential to just get started, get a group of multidisciplinary team members and just start working on it. With that, that's the end of the first webinar. Uh, we do have a second webinar uh, in a month's time uh, on, um, and it's about how we can 
translate how can how we can turn some of the technologies in your roadmap into a meaningful technologies. In the chat box, you'll be able to see the link to register for that webinar on November 12th. We also publish a lot of thought leadership pieces, uh, blogs, uh, on our blogs uh, on the website. You'll also be able to see a link uh, to access our blogs. Here are some of the content that are relevant uh, related to the webinar today. So with that, that's the end of the webinar. I hope it provides you with some useful content. And um, if you have your notes uh, on what some of the challenges uh, that you face in your technology road mapping or product planning, it's time to maybe refer back uh, to, the, to the challenges that you have identified and see if some of these activities and the steps address that. If not, um, I'll be very happy to discuss with you either uh, in the Q&A session that now, or I mean, feel free to email us and uh, we can discuss any of your challenges that you might face. Yeah, um, and I'll give a few minutes uh, for people to put their questions, but um, I see a feedback that um, one of the attendees was saying that marketing sites were going to join. And I think it's very relevant uh, for um, your colleagues um, or anyone's colleague from marketing, from design or consumer insight to join this uh, webinar. Uh, again, um, technology roadmap, it does not work in isolation. And the best uh, examples uh, that we see uh, are the ones which has a co close collaboration with the marketing department with other different um, areas. Um, Ryan, we have, um, we do have a couple of questions if you'd like to, to start answering them. Sure. Um, the first one is the horizons that you articulated, uh, throughout your presentation were 2021, 2024, and 2030. Is that applicable to every industry or are some industries less able to look so far into the future? Yeah, um, thank you so much. I, th I think that's a great question. And um, the horizon here differs from industry to industry. Um, here, we are just giving an example of 2021, 2024, and 2030. But in a fast moving uh, consumer goods industry, the horizon might be much shorter. Five years is a long time for them fast moving goods. Five years is going to be a very long time for, let's say, a consumer electronics company. But five years might be a relatively short uh, time for a medical device company. Some of the uh, medical device companies that we work with, we, they need to plan 10 years and beyond in order for them to have the horizon tree innovations. So it really differs um, on uh, the industry. And one thing to note is that while we have these horizons in mind, we are, should be able to really embrace potential disruptions that will challenge the horizons as well. Potentially, uh, there will be a disruptive innovation, disruptive um, technologies that 
arrive out of nowhere, which makes your horizon three irrelevant, your planning for the horizons irrelevant. So yes, we need to start with three horizons, but always prepare for the unpredictable. Okay. Um, uh, the next question that came in is, do you suggest a technique for testing your innovation themes to make sure they're solid and worth pursuing? Yeah. Um, in, our, in our process, uh, we do have, um, we use quantitative and qualitative research to test our innovation themes. And by default, the innovation themes are more forward looking. So they are not your typical kind of like uh, market research that you focus on the, uh, your general population. In the process of testing the innovation themes, we want to identify who are your future consumer, future customer. Uh, in one of the, uh, in one of the image, in one of the examples that I showed, we actually have future customer and a current customer. And that's a way for us to understand how your future customer might react differently to, towards the innovation themes, towards the different technologies. So using that um, as a kind of like a, a way to understand the difference between your current and the future customer and help to kind of evaluate the potential of your innovation theme. Also, uh, we do uh, stati statistical analysis of some of the drivers, um, even uh, historical trends in the, of the past. So for example, uh, we, can, we may be interested in how consumer, um, consumers' behavior towards, let's say, ethical living, sustainability, we can identify what are the events in the past, what are the different metrics uh, in the past, and how they correlate towards the consumer's attitude towards the sustainability, and predict how in the future, uh, first, um, in a business as usual scenario, how consumer's attitude towards sustainability might change, and also how potential events might drive that uh, attitude towards sustainability future to change. I think that understanding will allow us to tailor the technology roadmap towards the sustainability of the um, future. Okay, looks like we have uh, one last question here. Um, any advice for how to communicate the value of technology foresight and a technology roadmap? Have you seen examples of this done successfully? Um, yes, um, I think from the most basic um, kind of like a good visual communication of the roadmap and uh, not just focusing on the process, but the eventual outcome, the objective and the value, uh, the, the vision that this roadmap try to achieve, I think that is um, that's important and it's especially uh, inspirational for the, um, the management, uh, some of the management teams that we work with. And beyond just the visual communication of the vision, uh, the communication of where the roadmap will lead to, sometimes when we create that uh, vision of the future, we use uh, videos, we use uh, images to illustrate that future. And that again, um, it's more about storytelling, is how we translate a technology roadmap, which is more of a technical planning tool into something that is more relatable, into something that is more easy to understand and convincing. Um, so storytelling is going to be important part of the roadmapping, which is why uh, being relatable uh, is one of the key attributes of the good roadmap.
Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, do you see the other question that popped up? Yes, I saw uh, there's another question um, that's um, coming from Hi, Joe. <laughs> from Joe. Um, Joe uh, likes the idea of planning and innovation direction, uh, but um, he believes that unanticipated technical development occurs all the time. And uh, how this uh, unanticipated uh, development should be rolled into the planning process as well, and fostering a culture of innovation where companies always ready or prepared to capitalize the unexpected uh, technical uh, development. So how do we prepare for this? So there's two ways that we can go and uh, look at this. Um, first, um, Joe, you're definitely right. There's a lot of unexpected, unanticipated technical development. And first, what we want to do is try to filter are these technical developments happening, un unanticipated technical development happening at a solution level or happening at an opportunity level? Are they just a different way of solving a problem or are they creating a totally new set of opportunity? For the road mapping purposes, we are more interested in uh, technical development that create new opportunities. So, um, so that's, uh, I mean, first point, uh, first part of my answer, um, really a way to filter unanticipated development and making sure that we are focusing on what matter the most. Second, um, helping the companies to be always ready for disruption. And this is what a good road mapping exercise um, is supposed to do. As you see along the way in our presentation, we talk a lot about uncertainties. We talk about a lot about how to, can we mitigate and plan an adaptable uh, roadmap. So through a, a proper process of road mapping, we really try to explore and investigate different uncertainties. And by doing so, it makes the uncertainties, it makes the unexpected development less unpredictable, less scary for the company. And that really helps the company to embrace uncertainties more. So how do we help companies to, to be always ready? It's really about expose, exposing them to the uncertainties and helping them get used to create plans that are more adaptable. So uh, that seems to be the last questions that we have. And um, again, thank you so much uh, for your time. Um, and please uh, join our second webinar. Uh, today we talk about a lot about uh, technology uh, road mapping, about casting the vision. The next webinar is really about how we can turn these technologies into meaningful innovation. My colleagues will talk a lot about how we can use emerging technologies to create breakthrough products and co that continue to deliver business and consumer values. So it's going to be an interesting webinar. Uh, please sign up. With that, uh, thank you very much and have a great uh, rest of the day.